Good morning. Welcome to Gray Roots Digital Made by Me Experience. I'm Laura, Programs Coordinator here at Gray Roots. I'm so glad you could join us today for our eighth Made by Me Digital Experience. And today is all about Stuck on You. So it's kind of a mashup between stained glass and glue. Uh, before we jump into kind of talking more about the activity and the craft, I wanted to share something from our collection with you about stained glass. So we have Jacob, our summer student in the collections department, who will be talking to you about something that's very interesting from our collection that you might be able to see out in the community. So now we're just gonna hop over to collections and see what Jacob has to say. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Freilich, a summer student at Grey Roots Museum and Archives, and this is our collections room. Today, I will be talking about this artifact, a Venomous, which is part of our archival collection. Now, this Venomous was made by William E. Briffitt. A Venomous, such as this, is a type of provisional sketch made by a glazier, someone who fits glass into windows and doors, which would then be submitted to a patron who would approve it to be used as the design for an actual stained glass window. This Venomous is of St. John, and is from St. George's Anglican Church in Owen Sound. St. John is also known as John the Baptist, a Jewish prophet who had been born around 2,026 years ago, somewhere in Judea, according to the New Testament of the Bible. St. George's Anglican Church was first opened on August 7th of 1881, but was not officially consecrated until November 2nd, 1920. Prior to the creation of this church, Anglican services in the area had moved from several different buildings over time. The first of these buildings was a small log house owned by Thomas Hinchcliffe at the location that is currently 777 2nd Avenue East Owen Sound. Here, Anglican services were held until tensions between Mr. Hinchcliffe and Governor General Lord Elgin in 1851 led to the ending of this building being used as a church. Following this event, Anglican services moved to a different building owned by Owen Sound's first mayor, Richard Carney, before it was again moved to another building, a Church of England building on what is now 5th Avenue East Owen Sound. This building was used until the opening of St. George's Anglican Church. This artifact in particular interests me as it shows a key moment in the development of a building that served as the culmination of efforts to make an official and permanent location for Anglican services in Owen Sound. That's all I have to say for today, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Jacob. That was so interesting. Um, stained glass has always been something that I've been very interested in. Way back a long time ago, I actually was able to do um, a stained glass course at Fanshawe College. This is way back in high school, but it was very interesting because stained glass is kind of like a puzzle that you put together, you create the pieces and then you got to wrap them with like a foil piece um, to create the edge and then you solder it. So when we make our stained glass type painting, the stuck on you, the solder, the part that brings your puzzle pieces together to make kind of your, like your stained glass, that's actually going to be made just out of glue. So it was very interesting though. I have a couple of different designs that I played with. And this is one of the funnest things about this activity is that you get to choose completely what your art looks like. So for a couple of mine, I just had inspiration um, from local art or a local artist for one. So this was kind of like my version of a Tom Thompson painting. Um, and then I was able to, you know, you have the cedar tree and then I created the water and it was a beautiful sunset. So you can decide what you want to do. Whenever I start a painting though, I always like to start with sketches. So I'll get out a pad of paper, or even just scrap paper and just kind of sketch out what I want because one of the hardest things about doing this or even stained glass in general is you have to break down the sh complex shapes and turn them into more simple shapes. 
So it's a really good test of your artistic skills because it's going to be something that even if you take a photograph of, of what you want to paint, you can overlay it with like tracing paper or even just on the computer and just create some of those simple shapes that will give the general idea of a tree or the water or the sunset. It's totally up to you. And the hardest part though is the glue. So one of the things about the glue, one of the best things to remember is the glue is going to dry eventually, but while it's wet, it can still move. So you need to keep your canvas not on a tilt or any slight angle. You need to make sure it is completely flat while you're working on it. And then also when it dries, because when it dries, it is going to change a little bit and then things will morph. So I'm going to scoot that down. And so you can see right here, I did move this. I did move it while it was drying a little bit. And so there's a bit of a jut out. Now I could fix it and just go over the glue and that's totally up to you. But there is a lot of things that you'll play with. And I also did kind of change my mind about certain things. So you can change your mind and paint over things. I would definitely clean it up um, and probably cover my solder areas with either white paint or do like a soft gray. Um, because one of the interesting things too about stained glass is all the solder lines, because it's, you know, it's the solder or it'll be lead. You can actually rub um, like a stain on it to create a patina. So you could do that with this as well. Just remember not to get it onto the areas that you've painted, but there is a good raise of spaces and it does create a really good kind of valley for the paint to go. And I did start another painting um, here Put it this way. And you can see all of these little holes or the stained glass parts. And this one, I actually, I got inspiration. It's a uh, artist. Her name is Alma Woodsy Thomas. And she actually, she would go outside and she got inspiration from things in her garden. So this one is actually called Iris Tulips, Jonquils and Crocuses. So those are the colors that she actually saw in her garden from those flowers. And then she created something abstract. And I really liked how her painting looked and I really thought it was a good way to transfer and have something over fun that does look like stained glass. Just a really fun looking stained glass. So I started this yesterday and well, sorry, I started the paint yesterday. On Monday, I was able to do the glue. Now, in doing the glue, there were a, it was a really good reminder. When you are doing the glue, if you have long hair, it's a good idea to tie it up. I did get glue in my hair when I accidentally bent down too close to it while it was still wet. And I actually set down some papers accidentally on it when I was dropped drying so I have let's see if we can a little bit of a smushed area in this corner here so once you have your glue and you're happy put it somewhere that no one is going to touch I know I did have an issue when I was doing my original one with the tree um, at home because my young kids they were very interested in it so they were trying to touch it so it is good to have it someplace high out of the way and someplace flat and just give it a good chance to dry. Now this one, be, I don't know, I hadn't had the problem with the other painting, but I did get some glue bubbles. So I might try and kind of pop them and then recover them. Um, or I might just do something different in those spots. But this, all of this glue, I still have over half of my container. So if you do like doing this process, you can do more and you can even layer some more. So there are some areas here that are pretty low. 
Um, so I actually am going to just touch them up quickly. And we gave you the glue bottles, the full ones, because it's nice to have the tip um, so that you can just easily and quickly just put it on. And so I'm just going to add this. And then I am curious. I haven't, I never added a second layer on the other painting I did. So I'm going to be curious as to how it dries. Um, so you do that. And then these are a couple of my bubbles. So I'm going to actually just top those up and see how those dry. Not that it's like terrible that there's bubbles, it's just kind of breaks it up. So I'm gonna just kind of drag this on and add a bit more here and there. So again, this I'm gonna leave this to dry at least overnight just to make sure it's dry. And then I'll be able to go in and kind of play with it and see what other, um, I was thinking about the purple cone flower when I was doing this one. So I was going to think about different flowers, like wildflowers that we have here in Gray County or have here in the village, and then just have a look there. Now with your paint, you'll have the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then you'll also have white and black in your kit along with the paintbrush. Um, I have a few paintbrushes that I was working with yesterday. So with mine, because my areas are fairly small, smaller is better for me. But if you have larger areas, a larger, broader brush would be good. But it's always nice to have like kind of a finer brush to work with. Um, I don't have any formal palettes here at the museum, but I did take one of my craft books and just covered it with tin foil and just taped it to secure it. And then I was able to use this as my palette. Um, so I've done this before. I've done saran wrap. It's kind of whatever you have lying around the house. I've also used like old margarine container lids, um, anything like that, that could be, you can reuse those, um, just wash them off and just make sure you don't, um, get the acrylic paint anywhere that it can stain. So it's nice to work in a messy work shirt. Um, and it's good to, if it's on a hard surface, once it's dry, you can scratch it off. But if it's a soft surface like clothing, it's always good to keep it wet and then just get it washed straight away. Um, Cause accidents do happen. And unless you really want paint on your clothes, it's good to get it washed right away. Um, and I do have my cup of water. And then I always do keep some paper towel close by, um, kind of to dry off my brush and to clean things up. So those are all kind of simple things around the house that you can have to make your painting experience go a bit smoother. But remember, always remember, plan for your glue to take at least a day to dry, but start with that sketch. So you could go outside, look online for some pictures, kind of whatever you're thinking. Um, so one of the, the example that Jacob gave, it was for church and a lot of the early stained glass was um, religious in nature. So you could do something like that, but you can do whatever you want. Like I am really intrigued to see what this painting is going to turn out like, because it is just, it would be a very, it would be a huge challenge to be able to complete this in stained glass to cut all the different shapes and everything like that. But I like the flexibility of paint to do this because I'm very interested to see what happens. And I am going to check and see if there's any questions at all um, for this activity. And oh, there are no questions today. But if you have any questions that you would like to ask, please reach out. We are happy to help. And when you are finished with your stained glass stuck on me um, masterpiece, please send us a picture or you can tag us online at hashtag MBM Grey Roots. So made by me, Grey Roots, because we're very interested to see what everyone creates. So thank you so much for joining us today and we hope to see you again next week. So thank you for joining us.